Hello friends, welcome to Joy of Life. So before we proceed with this episode, what I would like to tell you is that if you have not seen the system design introduction video, wherein we have discussed about the architecture of this mini project that we are building, I would highly recommend you to check the same. I will leave a link to the description as well so that you can click, check the same and then get back onto the video. In the last video, we have seen how to consume JSON from Kafka, how to produce it and all the details. So it's time to start something new and as discussed previously, we are going to look at uh, API gateway and service discovery in the upcoming few episodes. So to understand it in full details, what we'll do is we'll go hands on, we'll try to see the real problem that we are trying to solve and we'll see how API gateway helps us to achieve the same. Okay, so before that, what I'll do is I'll quickly walk you through uh, what are the changes that I have made in this uh, application, in both the application rather, HTML worker and URL feeder service. Not much of a change. I have just renamed the Pong to Pong from URL feeder service. And the next change that I have done is when you submit a URL, so you submit it to me and uh, previously we are not sending anything, any response back. We are just sending OK. But now we are sending the URL object back. So this URL object will have only two or three field set, nothing else. So the main intention for returning this URL object is to have this ID returned with the object. So as you can see that uh, the ID is set, so it will be returned. So what's the importance of this ID? So basically we have created a new endpoint with ID. So there is a get mapping. If you pass me the ID, what I'll do is I will get you the details from the database. So I'll just do a get with that ID. I will get the details and send you back, right? And if you remember while uh, configuring our Kafka, what we did is now we are sending both, right? We are sending the URL object as a whole. So while saving this URL in our URL processor, we'll store that ID as well. So if you remember now that our worker, the HTML worker, it will receive the URL object that was passed from there. So it will have the ID and it will have the URL. So we'll have both the URL and the ID stored in the Mongo as well, the same ID so that we are consistent. So we are setting this URL ID and URL in the same page info object that we are persisting in, in the Mongo database, right? So that we can do a lookup. So having said that, what I have done is I have created an endpoint. So in our URL resource, though it's not recommended that you create a endpoint in your workers, I have just done it to show you the importance of the API gateway because we have mostly workers. So I've just created an endpoint for you. What it takes is a URL ID. Why I'm calling it a URL ID and not an ID? Because Mongo has a separate ID and we are storing the URL ID. So if you remember, if I open my page info object, so we have a separate ID and we have a URL ID, right? What I have done is I have created a new service over here. It doesn't have much. What it has is a get method and the same page repository that we have created earlier. And it is finding it by the ID, nothing else. So over here in the page repository, I have added a query that we want to get by the URL ID where um, the value is equals to the ID. So it will return me ID, right? So let us see a quick demo of what we have done and what we have achieved so far. Over here, I have uh, all these containers that we need. All of them are running over here. As you can see, we have Kafka, we have Zookeeper, we have HTML worker, URL feeder service, Redis, Cassandra, Mongo, everything is running over here. So in Postman, what we'll uh, first try is our both the endpoints for ping that we have created. So let's try with um, 8085, which is our URL feeder service. So I'll change it to ping. So you can see that we got a pong from our URL feeder service and the moment I change this to 8084, you can see that we'll get it from our HTML worker. So let's send a request to the post endpoint. Uh, let's remove this ping and uh, let's prepare a body. So let's try with the Amazon.in. Okay, the moment I send the request, you can see that uh, we got an ID back from the service, right? And uh, what we are going to do over here is we are going to take this ID that we have just received from here. And uh, as you know that we have created a new get mapping with just the ID as a path parameter. So we are going to hit that endpoint. So we are going to paste this ID over here and change this to get. 
the moment i change this to get you can get more details about this um, url so it will tell you how many times this has been processed so previously it was zero if you remember the content type of this url last process time and the created date similarly if i now go ahead and change this to 8084 then i should get with the same id the entire content for this page so the moment I do it, you can see that we receive that all the keywords present on the page and all the content of the home page or the URL that has been passed, right? So the ID is now consistent. We can get all the details from both this application. Now with this approach, do you see there is a problem? There is a big problem. So let's understand what the problem is, right? So let's go over to the board and let's try to understand. So what's happening at the moment is we have this URL feeder service. So the client is sending the request over here first. And then uh, once he receives the ID, he's sending a request to HTML worker to get the page content. And right. And similarly for this guy, for all the guys, it's the same, right? They have to send requests to both of them. And now if you realize what happens is when we deploy such kind of application, each of this uh, application is going to have a different IP address and different port, right? So even in our case over here, if I just go ahead and do a Docker inspect URL feeder service, you'll see that we have an IP. So what it is 172.17.07. Then we have the port, right? This is for our URL feeder service. Similarly, for HTML worker, we have a separate IP. So now what happens? This has an IP of 172.17.0.8. Now do you see a problem? The problem is that each of my clients, so this is my client 1, this is my client 2, each of this client need to know all the IPs and the port for all the services. And tomorrow, this might get changed, right? This is not assured to be the same. And what is happening? He need to manage all this by himself. Tomorrow, we'll have more applications coming in, right? So we'll have a bunch of applications that will come in tomorrow. So what will happen? It will have a different IP, let's say 172.17.09, port 3001. It will have a different IP, 172.17.010, 5001 or things like that, right? It will keep happening and the more and more the service comes up, the client need to know each and every IP and each and every port for each one of the application, right? And it, it's difficult because tomorrow I might have more instances of URL feeder service as well. One instance may not be good enough, right? I'll have more instances. So it, it need to manage all of them together. So that's a big problem, right? We cannot do that. So every time a client needs to know maybe thousands of IP addresses or maybe ten, tens of thousands of IP addresses, which is not feasible. So one easy way to solve this problem is to introduce an API gateway. So what is an API gateway? So all our clients previously was talking to each one of the service, right? And I don't want to do that, right? So this API gateway is nothing but it is the entry point for everybody who is coming in right this is my gateway so this request will come here and this guy over here the gateway will decide where to send him so he might send him here he might send him here he doesn't need to know anything he just sends a request and he decides where he should go where his request should end up right so that that's the thing so that's the important part right because I don't want everybody to know all my services because these are my internals, right? So I will create a gateway over here and this gateway will decide where to send him. And the client need not know the internals of what services that I have and what is their API and what is their uh, ports and things like that. We'll use something called Zool. So Zool is uh, nothing but a server, is a ga gateway application that handles all the requests and routes it to your particular service. It is also called a edge server. So we'll see a very uh, basic implementation of Zool. We'll try to visualize that to, uh, how it solves our problem. So currently, since it's in localhost, so I had to just change the port, right? But it's not the scenario in a real production, right? You will not run everything on your localhost, right? 
created an application over here so uh, we call it gateway so we are going to open it from IntelliJ and see all the details of the service so here I have opened the application it's a very simple application I'll run you through the application so what we have is spring version 2.3.12 post that um, uh, Zool has some problems it's under maintenance so, so we have spring boot starter web added here and we have spring cloud starter netflix Zool. that's the only two dependencies that we are going to need and we are not going to change much of the, much of the application in our application you can see that we have enabled Zool proxy and it's a spring boot application nothing much over here and what we are going to do next is we are going to configure our properties file over here so we'll add a bunch of properties over here and we'll understand them in uh, little details so first is we'll add a server port so we want this application to maybe run at 5001 and uh, let's give it a name so let's say its name is uh, it's a uh, gateway because this is our uh, api gateway and then we have to give some uh, configuration for our Zool. So we have to set the routes. And under routes, we have to set the path for our URL feeder service. So currently we have two services, the URL feeder service. So we have to set the path for it. And similarly, we have to set the URL for the same. And uh, same goes for our HTML worker. So we'll uh, have this bunch of configurations over here. So for our path, let's say it's an API gateway. So any request with URL feeder service with uh, anything. So if it starts with uh, URL feeder service followed by anything. So any request coming with this pattern will get routed to localhost um, 8085. Similarly for uh, our HTML worker what we'll do is we'll route it to 8084 and uh, the path will be different so we'll update the path we'll change it to HTML worker so any request matching this patterns will be redirected our application this new application will run at uh, 5001 and we are going to see in much more details right so what we'll do is quickly we'll start this application so this I'm running from local and we have everything else running from our docker. So we have the HTML worker and everything else running over here. Right. And uh, all the requests that we'll be sending is to 5001. So we don't need to care right where uh, our other services are running. So the application is up and running. It's fine. So what we are going to do is we are first going to change this. So we'll hit the 5001 port for our api gateway and then followed by that we'll have api slash url feeder service slash ping so if you remember we created a bunch of ping endpoints right so you can see that we got a pong and we just need to change this nothing else so you can see that our ip and the port is the same only thing that we are changing is the path right so you can understand now my application just need to know my gateway and nothing else so what i'll do quickly is uh, let's try with the post endpoint so let's get rid of this uh, ping from it and uh, try with flipkart.com and it's a json so it's fine so you can see that we got the id over here and now if with this id if i go ahead and send a get request so you can see that it's all zero null 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 and all that right now we'll get the real details from the url feeder service right and if i go ahead and change this url from html feeder service to html worker we will get all the details so you can see that our ip or the port doesn't need to change so everything is being routed by our gateway so we are just calling our gateway we are sticking to the same ip and the port and we are still getting our things done so this is how our api gateway comes handy we don't need to have so many of the ips and the ports exposed to the end user right we can just get it done using our gateway that we have just seen over here in the diagram right 
we did a very basic configuration over here and in the videos to come we will um, have the service discovery so you can understand that uh, we are hard coding these things right so what we'll try next is we'll try to set up a service discovery so that all the services they register with the service discovery and Zool talks to the service discovery to get this uh, mappings right we don't need to map it right so tomorrow if i need to add a new path so every time i have to come over here and then i have to change this to some xyz that we need to do and then we need to redeploy it all over again right which is not desirable right we we, we cannot keep changing and redeploying this again and again right so we'll see how to get that done in the upcoming video so that's all from this video wherein i just wanted to show you the basic of what api gateway is and how to configure it using zool and we'll see some other services as well so if you see in the spring side uh, zool is no more there because it's not compatible with the latest versions um, it is not compatible with 2.4.8 and that's the reason why we are using one of the older version 2.3.12 to get this uh, done so later we'll see how to use this gateway so spring provides an effective way to have this gateway configured so we'll try this out as well we'll see the eureka uh, server and the eureka client in the next video so yeah that's all from this video so uh, let me know if you have any questions uh, please feel free to post it in the comment section below all this uh, code will be checked in so that you can refer back to it anytime you want so yeah i'll end the video over here stay safe stay subscribed and see you soon again bye bye and take care